Tonight, winter returns with a vengeance as wet and windy conditions hit our region. And a desperate plea for more foster carers in the Spencer Gulf. With the latest from around the region, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. Emergency services remain on high alert tonight as wind gusts continue to batter the region. Authorities issuing a severe weather warning for parts of the Spencer Gulf, with large swells and waves developing in coastal areas. It was the calm before the storm. Port Lincoln bearing the brunt of the windy conditions this afternoon with gusts reaching up to 80 kilometres an hour by midday. We've got northwesterly winds averaging 50 to 70 kilometres an hour. Uh, we gust at 100 kilometres an hour ahead of the front and potentially higher than that over the coming days. The wind keeping our emergency services on edge. SES warning residents to tie down any loose objects around your home and to drive to the conditions on the highways. Travelling at those high speeds, you may come around the corner and find a tree across the road, so we're asking people to take a lot of care out there. Over the coming days, coastal areas will bear the brunt of this destructive weather, with large waves and swells developing across parts of the Spencer Gulf. So we're looking at uh, waves up to seven metres uh, high by Friday. That's uh, what, the sort of waves that we see once or twice a year uh, around southern South Australia. The state government issuing a code blue in response to the extreme weather, helping those sleeping rough. Emergency services urgently warning holiday makers to remain vigilant and keep away from coastlines. We've got a number of tourists in the area who may not know our sea conditions in our coastlines, so we're asking those people to look after themselves and stay back from those zones. If you need help, contact the National State Emergency Line on 132 500 or call 000. Nathan Regter, Simon Spencer Golf News. A broken hill man will face court next month after allegedly causing a police chase in the city south. Officers allege the man attempted to evade a squad car, trying to stop him for a random breath test. The man has allegedly driven down Air Street, turned right then left onto Piper Street, before allegedly abandoning his vehicle. Police claim he was found a short time later, trying to hide in a nearby quarry. He's facing multiple charges including driving disqualified in trespassing. And Port Lincoln police are trying to track down the owner of several pieces of jewellery after a man was recently arrested. Patrols stopping the 34-year-old man on Porter Street, allegedly finding a number of pieces of golden jewellery in the man's possession. The man from Wyala was arrested and charged with unlawful possession. Police believe the jewellery was stolen from owners in Port Lincoln and Wyala. Anyone who recognises the jewellery is asked to contact Crown Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. Support services in the Upper Spencer Gulf say they're in dire need of foster carers across the region. They say more helping hands are needed to meet a growing demand of vulnerable children. They tirelessly offer their time to the children most in need, but a shortage of foster carers is straining the system. In Wyala in particular, we've just heard that there were 20 young people that had to leave the region because we were unable to find foster carers in the last year. The gap forcing children out of town, abandoning the things they cherish the most. Community, their culture, their school, their sports. The state government says Wyala needs around 15 more foster families to fill the void and other regional centres are in the same position. There are lots of people who maybe just haven't considered being a foster parent. Michelle Atkinson is one of the few offering a foster home. She cares for five children. Kids are kids and it's not their fault that they're where they are and everyone deserves to be loved. She says while the job is demanding at times, the positives far outweigh the negatives. And I'm pretty blessed really with all my children. Centre Care in Wyala is hosting two open days this Thursday and Friday for people to hear more about foster caring. More helping hands offering vulnerable children the same opportunities as everyone else. We really represent what a real family is. Real families come in all different, you know, shapes and sizes as they say. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News.
A recent rise in the price of iron ore is boding well for mining companies in the Broken Hill region. Iron ore prices hit a five-year high last week of almost 130 US dollars a ton. For explorers like Carpentaria Resources and Lodestone that have major deposits in the region, their projects are now receiving more international attention. The rise in ore prices is believed to be caused by supply shortfalls in Australia and Brazil and the increasing demand for steel in Asia, India and Africa. While a council is bowed to pressure from ratepayers, lowering its proposed rate rise by half a percent. But some fear it's still too high and will hurt the hip pocket of locals. Just weeks ago, a proposed 4% rate rise led to 500 Wyala residents venting their anger through submissions. But council has finally heard their concerns. We've managed to achieve a 3.5% rate rise. The council shaving half a percent off its earlier target, managing to balance the books in the face of increased fees from the state government. Obviously the state government made some announcements about the solid waste levy uh, and with substantial increase. But the Ratepayers Association isn't pulling any punches in its assessment. The rates right now are just not justified. Mr Antonio says cheaper rates would help residents and businesses doing it tough. You can see there's shops all over Wyala that are boarded up just like the one behind me. Business and residents cannot afford these sort of rates going up. The council says the increase will help deliver improved future outcomes for the city. If we want to present our city you know, as this livable city with, with high levels of community amenity, we need, we need a certain level of income. But with the solid waste levy set to jump to $240,000 over the next year, the Wyala Council says it will have to make savings over the next 12 months. We'll be working hard during this next 12 months to look at ways where we can combat that. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come, Port Pirie's elderly population gets a lesson in life choices and the Silver City's female football is ready for the country championships. Welcome back. Your Life, Your Say, a campaign to help older residents out with their affairs, has launched at Port Pirie's Lifestyle Village. The directive helping locals have better control over their own choices. Helping elderly people keep control. Port Perry Council has officially launched its Your Life, Your Say project today. An initiative helping aged and vulnerable people make their own informed choices. We can empower people in the community to actually have their advanced care directives, their enduring powers of attorney and their wills done free of charge. The need becoming increasingly important. With 16% of Port Pirie's population aged over 65, 2% higher than the national average. Today's launch an opportunity to get more people on board. Answer any queries that people may have with regards to working out uh, what they choose to do uh, with, their, with their life. Keynote speakers from the Legal Services Commission gave insight documenting their future plans. It's really important that people put these documents in place so that they plan ahead and that they continue to have a voice and that their choices are respected as they get older. Legal advisors saying that digital literacy is vital for handling legal documents, with the majority now available online. It's really important that older people are familiar with that option um, and are able to complete the document online if they want to. So having f uh, digital literacy is a really important component in this. We got $24,800, which was really, really great to enable us uh, and, and empower the council to actually be able to provide this. Dominic Beaton, Seven Spencer Golf News. Barunga West Council has opened up a new round of community grants for 2019 and 2020. $30,000 is on the table, with a maximum of $5,000 being allocated to each project. Applications will be opened until the 16th of August. Community groups can apply for the grants by collecting forms from the council's office or electronically via the council's website. The Port Lincoln RSPCA has opened its doors today to more than a dozen junior rescue officers. The workshop aiming to encourage and engage children in animal welfare. Letting the cat out of the bag on animal welfare. The Port Lincoln RSPCA holding a junior rescue workshop educating children on how to look after our furry friends. Even though they are young there are definitely still things that they can um, that they can do to help animals and to, to help educate other people to help animals as well. 
The workshop is a one-of-a-kind with the Port Lincoln RSPCA branch the only shelter to offer the activity. The team first trialling the project last year. So far uh, in the Port Lincoln area we have had 61 children participate in the, uh, the Junior Rescue Officer program which is absolutely amazing. The program helping spark and educate interest in animal safety. I wanted to become a vet, take care of animals so I can show other people how you can't be me to animals if they're, if they're being like her. This is Shania White's third workshop. She says she loves coming and making a difference for the animals. The group here making boxes and ropes for those up for adoption. You get to help animals and make toys for them. Organisers say they're planning on holding another junior workshop later this month. For more information, visit their Facebook page. Nathan Regter, Seven Spencer Golf News. Broken Hills female footballing talent will be on show this weekend in Port Pirie. A squad of players will represent the Northern Zone in this year's country football championships. Broken Hill women's footy is now in its eighth season and the development clearly shows. Out of the 24-woman Northern squad for Saturday's country championships, 16 spots have been filled by Silver City talent. More and more girls are wanting to come and play football, um, especially with these uh, youth girls that are starting up. So they're starting to get into that and then they carry it on into the, uh, into the under-13s and 15s as well. The girls will be among dozens of elite female footballers all playing in Port Pirie this weekend. It's the second time the women's competition will be held, with the Northern Zone looking to improve on last year's third place. Finish. A lot of the girls have been playing with each other for a long time now so they sort of know how to play with each other and they've gone away with each other at numerous amount of times. Among the players going down, 2015 Jan Corey medalist Shelby Raven from Central, Phoebe Nell from West, South Shea Neville and North's Britt Tangy. To have four or five people from each club is just outstanding to be able to see the talent spread across Broken Hill women's football. Close to 5,000 footy fans are expected to converge on Port Piri for the championships. The Adelaide Crows and Port Magpies will also play the SA NFL showdown on Saturday afternoon. Patrick Ryan Key, 7 Spencer Golf News. Good luck girls. Stay with us after the break. We'll take a look at the region's fuel prices and Brett will join us with the latest weather forecast. Hello again. Gladstone's golfers have been busy teeing up for their annual Day on the Green fundraiser. Money raised at this year's event will go towards repairing the course's ageing club rooms. A quick round of golf to keep the club's finances out of the rough. Gladstone Golf Course holding their annual fundraiser to help keep the course putting along. Today's all about just a bit of fun, get some people out to the club. It's our main fundraiser for the year. People have been teeing off from the club's green pastures for almost a century. A legacy locals wish to see continue for years to come. Um, it's extremely important. It gives gives everybody another option during winter instead of just football and netball. The event attracting crowds young and old, with each participant chipping in as part of the fundraiser. We're hoping for in the vicinity of 50 or 60 people, so about 12 or 13 teams. Funds raised will go towards general maintenance around the course, but the club's captain is hopeful some funds will go towards his vision of a major facility upgrade. We would like to do a bit of upgrading inside the clubhouse to our kitchen and just the general facilities. The next generation have also swung into action, with the club opening up its competition to a handful of eager young juniors. It's fun, it's isolated and it can either be team or individual sport. Dominic Beaton, 7 Spencer Golf News. Great stuff there. Time now for a look at how things are shaping up at the Bowser. Here's Patrick Reinke with this week's Fuel Watch. Well, as the school holidays commence, petrol prices have predictably and unfortunately started to go back up. Starting with unleaded and Port Lincoln is close to paying $1.50 a litre after climbing by more than three cents. While has had a worse week, the Steel City seeing a spike of four cents, taking its average back to one forty. Port Augusta is around the same price, going up by three. Port Perry is going up also, but it's only by a small amount. The price there still one thirty eight. Kadena is a cent more. Broken Hill has also enjoyed a week of little movement, but the signs of further price rises are there. Adelaide is 
the most expensive on the board after its cycle started once again, the price jumping by 18 cents to hover around 151. Turning over to diesel now and it's been a fairly quiet week despite the red arrows. Port Lincoln is breaking even at 150 while it is down to $1.48. Port Augusta and Port Piri are quiet. Kadena is at 149. Broken Hill has gone up by 2 cents to now average 154. The price in Adelaide is still around 143. Finishing off with a look at auto gas and it's actually been quite a good week. If places weren't breaking even their prices were on the way down. Port Lincoln is on 92 cents a litre. Port Augusta is three cents cheaper at 89. Wireless price tumbled by six cents to 91. Elsewhere, Port Pirie and Broken Hill are on 87. Kadena on 89 as well. Adelaide is now down to just 79 cents a litre. Now, of course, remember that these prices are the regional averages and they do not reflect any one particular outlet. And if you do find a spot that does sell unleaded auto gas or diesel for cheaper, be sure to let us know on our Facebook page. Weather now and the wintry blast we experienced today looks set to stay for a few days. Here's Britt with the details. Well, not quite, John. The winds are set to calm slightly by tomorrow morning, but those wet conditions are here to stay. As mentioned earlier in tonight's bulletin, it's been wild, wet and windy across most parts of the region today, with Broken Hill remaining sunny and dry. Port Augusta reached a top of 21 degrees, Wyala 20, Broken Hill and Port Pirie 19, Port Lincoln 17, Adelaide 16. To the skies where a vigorous cold front crossed the region this afternoon, followed by a strong westerly flow. On the waters tomorrow, westerly winds at up to 30 knots with seas at 3 metres. And we'll see showers and rain over most parts with strong winds expected at Coffin Bay. Port Augusta and Wyala both with expected tops of 19 tomorrow. Port Lincoln, Woodna, Broken Hill, Port Pirie, Cleve and Kadena all 17. Coffin Bay, Corn and Adelaide 16, Clare 13. Moving on to the four-day forecast now with rain expected at Port Lincoln on Friday. Saturday looking partly cloudy ahead of a shower or two on Sunday. Cleve showers on Friday, Saturday fine and a cloudy day on Sunday. Woodna wet again on Friday, remaining cloudy across the weekend. Wyala and Port Augusta both looking fine and partly cloudy through the remainder of the week. Kadena expecting some rain on Friday, fine on Saturday with showers on Sunday. Showers at Port Pirie both Friday and Saturday, Sunday looking cloudy. Clare with rain forecast on Friday looking fine on Saturday with some Sunday showers. And Broken Hill remaining fine and partly cloudy into the weekend. And John, that wraps up today's weather. It's back to you. Thanks, Britt. And that's the local news this Wednesday evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'll have some updates later in the evening, but until then, enjoy your night's viewing here on 7. On behalf of the team, it's good night.